The long sword is a favorite weapon of mine. I just love how you basically be a samurai while fighting these huge monsters. Or if any of you played Devil May Cry, you can basically be Virgil. Anyways, let's talk about the five tips for the long sword, where the fifth tip will be about skills that I would recommend using along with this weapon. Hey guys, my name is Short Devil and I do stream on Twitch. The link is down in the description below where you can talk to me live and see any other possible dumb things that I get up to. So be sure to follow me on there. And also, if you haven't already, follow me on my Twitter. Again, link down in the description below where you can see any other channel updates. So be sure to follow me on those platforms. Now before we can start off this whole video, I want to say that this video is catered towards the new players of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. So if you're a veteran or advanced player that are out there watching this video, you don't need to watch this. I'm pretty sure you know what you're doing with the weapon. But it will be great if you can drop down in the comments below if I missed any other information that you need to know about the longsword. Starting off with our first tip for the longsword is to build up that spirit gauge. Now that's the little sword icon that you normally see just below your stamina bar. Build up to the highest level which is when the bar highlights in red. And that's when you can fully maximize the power of this weapon. To build up, you firstly need to have gained some spirit energy by attacking the monster every now and then. Once you've done that, then you're able to use the spirit blade attacks. The spirit blades attacks are done by pressing the R2 button or RT button, whichever controller. And these attacks will be able to hit any part of the monster, but it will reduce the sharpness of your weapon. Once you've pulled off the chain of spirit blade attacks, you'll be able to pull off the final attack, which is called the spirit round slash. If you hit a monster with this attack, you'll be able to level up the spirit gauge. The first time that you hit the spirit round slash, it will change the bar color to white. That is the first level of the spirit gauge. Do it again and it will turn it to orange, which is the second level. And lastly, it will turn red on the third time that you hit the spirit round slash, which is the final level of the spirit gauge. The second tip is this weapon's strongest attack, which is called the Helm Breaker. Now you can only perform this attack when you have at least one level of your spirit gauge. By pressing both the R2 and triangle buttons or the RT and Y button, you will stab the monster and then your character will jump up into the air and slice downwards. This attack will hit the monster multiple times and if the monster somehow moves out the way of your attack, you can also change the direction of wherever your character is facing by using your left stick. Once you have performed the attack, it will drop the spirit gauge by one level. To make full use of the power of this attack, you need to make sure that the spirit gauge is on the highest level. Now you can still perform this attack on the lower levels, so if it's on a yellow bar or on a white bar, you can still do this attack, but you won't be getting the maximum damage out of the Helmbreaker. That's why it's best to try and keep the spirit gauge to at least the red level. You can keep it to yellow, but Try to make it red. The third tip is to make use of this weapon's counters. Now the longsword is able to perform three different kinds of counters. All of these attacks are high risk, high reward moves because of how difficult it is to time the attack. And if not timed correctly, you're gonna take damage from the monster. One of these counters is called the foresight slash. To perform this attack, you will firstly need to have any build up in the meter do any attack, and then press the R2 and circle buttons. Or again, if you're on X Xbox controllers, press the RT and B buttons. This counter is useful for easily leveling up the spirit gauge, but you gotta make sure that you meet the requirements for you to level up the gauge. Firstly, you have to time the animation correctly. If not done correctly, you will lose any build up that you have in the spirit gauge. However, if done correctly, you will instantly fill up the gauge and you'll be able to perform the spirit round slash. The other requirement is that, well, you're gonna make sure the spirit round slash hits the monster. Because in the end, the spirit round slash is what levels up the spirit gauge. So overall, the foresight slash 
just basically gives you a quick shortcut to the spirit round slash attack. The other two counters require you to activate the special sheath attack. By pressing both the R2 and X buttons after doing an attack, your counter will put the sword back into the sheath and stand in a cool pose, something that you'd see in Devil May Cry or Virgil. This is when you can choose between one of these two counters. First is the EI slash. If timed perfectly, the spirit gauge will fill up faster than usual. However, you can still use this attack like a usual attack, and either way it will not consume the spirit gauge at all. So whether you've timed the, cat the attack correctly, or whether you're just using it as a normal attack, it will still not use the spirit gauge at all. Whereas the other counter, which is called the EI Spirit Slash, that will consume one level of the spirit gauge if you perform this counter incorrectly. However, if you have done this attack correctly, you will cause massive damage to the monster and the spirit gauge will not drop a level at all. The fourth tip is actually to predict on what the monster will do. If you're able to predict what the monster does at a specific time, then you'll be able to make full use of the counters or even using the spirit attacks. For example, if you can predict where the monster will move to, you can just perform your chain of spirit blade attacks and by the time the monster moves to that location, you'll be able to hit the monster with the round slash attack and instantly level up your spirit gauge. Another factor to look into is that every attack that you do with the longsword, there's a small little window for you to decide your next attack. You can use this chance to choose to either continue your attack to build up that spirit gauge or dodge out of the way or counter the monster's attack. So just take your time, predict on the monster's next move and act accordingly. And here we are at the fifth tip which is skills that I would recommend using. Now I'm not trying to say that you definitely need to have these skills on, I'm just saying take a look at them, it might help out. Now one of them skills is health boost. We all know what health boost does, it increases your health right? But it's useful so that it you know, ensures you that hey, you have an additional amount of health remaining for whenever you mess up your counters because I mess up my counters, having health boost will actually help out. The focus skill will help with increasing the gauge fill rate by a certain amount. And obviously we're talking about our spirit gauge, so if you want your spirit gauge to gain much faster than usual, then focus is your way to go. The power prolonger skill will allow the long sword to stay powered up for longer, so if it's on the red gauge, it will stay for much longer than it normally would. Divine Blessing will help out whenever you just take hits, so whether you mess up a counter or you just get hit overall, Divine Blessing is a good one for just reducing the amount of damage that you take. The Maximum Might skill is a good one as well because of how the Longsword doesn't use the stamina at all. So if your stamina is always at max while you're performing attacks, then Maximum Might will always be triggered. And that's all I have for the Longsword. The Longsword is a fun weapon to use, I love the Helm Breaker move, but I hate countering. There are times where I can counter and other times where I just cannot counter for the life of me. Just I try to counter and the monster still hits me. Hate it. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video useful in some way. Give it a like if you did, and subscribe to the channel for more helpful videos. And also, if you haven't already, follow me on my Twitch. Link is down in the description box below, where you can talk to me live and see whatever dumb things that I get to in my streams. And also, my Twitter link is again down in the description box below to see any other channel updates. So thank you guys for watching, and I shall see you guys later. Whoa, that was brutal. <laughs> oh my god, the whole team. No, stay where you are. Okay, I think I cleared them all out.